I make a mountain out of molehill and kill the rodent. I wrote these bars by accident and still they quote it. This eagle open up faces like we watching carbs. Unassuming shooters swam me in the case with rock guitars. A decade plus, I ain't star spazzing either. All right, we caught up with uh, Big Hef. This is your boy Steve from MCTV. And uh, we're going to talk a little hip-hop. Okay. Big Hef. Uh, so I, that's kind of a unique name. Tell us, tell us where that come from. Uh, actually, one of my good friends is DJ Ice from Bone Thugs and Harmony, and we were putting together this Bone Thugs and Harmony project, and I couldn't go out into my government. It's Quincy, so I didn't want to go into my government. So we created the name Big Hef to, uh, to, to be my alias, and it just kind of stuck with me. So it stemmed from DJ Ice and Bone Thugs and Harmony. Okay, that's what's up. So, Bone Thugs, so that, that goes back a little ways. Which, which project was that you guys were working on? Uh, we made we made two projects. One was Thieveland Soldiers, and one was East 99th Eternal. Oh, yeah. So we made that's a, a classic. Yeah, yeah. So we played off the uh, the East 99th project, but we just said it's Eternal Life for Life. Okay, yeah. that's what's up. All right. So so you've been in the hip hop game for a while. What was one of the? How were you first uh, introduced from a, from a job aspect? How did you first become oriented with hip hop? Um, on the job side, I was I was an intern with Bone Thugs, and then I, I put out I worked at Lansby Records, and they put out the first Fifty Cent project. So shout out to Michael Meinerstein for uh, putting me aboard with Lansby. We just started to grow and develop from there. But at the end of the day, like uh, I used to start, I started doing mixtapes a long time ago. So I would sell mixtapes. So a lot of relationships I built was uh, originally with DJs, and. Some of the first DJs that I started to work with, one was DJ Who Kid. Okay. Uh, the other one was Mick Boogie, DJ G Spot, and Joey Fingers. So, Who Kid went on to be 50 Cent's DJ. Mick Boogie is a, a, a great DJ in his own right. And uh, Joey Fingers is one of the part owners of a lot of mixtapes. So, it was, okay. a, it was a good foundation to grow from. That's what's up. So, okay, so, so you, were you working out of, uh, out of, Ohio then yeah. and and New York as yeah, well. I was going back and forth from Ohio and New York all the time. Okay, so where are you originally from? Chicago. Okay, yeah, yeah. Chi Town. Yeah, yeah, Chicago. That's what's up. Not a bad city to be from either. Coming no, out the Midwest. No, no, you know it, it definitely gave me the, the hustle spirit and the foundation to, to go out here and want more and get more. And uh, you know, luckily I, I, I stumbled along a great path and it became you know my passion for music became a career. And so, I mean, you definitely work with a lot of greats along the way. I, I say I got like a Forrest Gump type of story, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. All right, so what's up with Big Hef these days? Uh, a little bit of everything. So, you know, I'm at Def Jam. I'm at 300 ENT, which is Kevin Lyles' label. Uh, we have a lot of great new artists, so I get a chance to work with a lot of new artists and like YK Osiris, like Megan Thee Stallion, Lil Key, Famous Deck. So, I, you know, T Grizzly was one of the uh, bigger, big parts of my, I guess, the last three or four years of my career. So just, you know, still in the Midwest, still pounding the pavement. And then uh, I just started an imprint called Capital Structure. And uh, I signed, you know, I started with DJ. So the first person I signed was DJ Ryan Wolf. He's a DJ at the Cleveland Browns. And then I signed a female artist by the name of Ty Bree. And, uh, you know, I have a lot of good news that I'm gonna announce real soon about that for 2020. And uh, you know, I'm still happy about all the success from YK Cyrus and Megan Thee Stallion. Nice, nice. Okay, now you said you got your own print imprint. Is that is that more like a, a label offering or artist management or both or? No, it's a, it's an independent label. Um, I have a partnership that I'm doing with a major soon, and uh, you know, I just I wanted to kind of create like some boutique that I could have on my own. Like everybody knows big brands like Def Jam, and but I wanted to create the new QC. Okay, that's what's up. Yeah. Now, I, I, I kind of buried the lead on this. We blew right past it. You said Def Jam. Yeah. That's a that's a big name. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's... Uh, 2014, man, I was, uh, I, I was working at Epic Records, doing some work at Epic Records, and then I got a call from my guy, EP, and he just asked me to be a part of the Def Jam family. And I, you know, it was a guy, uh, you know, I was kind of in between, but it's a relationship that I couldn't turn down, so... Got a chance to make me better, work with a lot of A1, A, B list artists, and we're here. That's what's up. Yeah. So, just from a novice like myself, what are you're, you're an A&R at, uh, at Def do, Jam? I do artist development. Okay, yeah. and that's what I was going to kind of touch on. So, what is 
what is your daily role as that scouting for talent or I scout for talent i just make sure uh it's a little bit of everything man i try to it's you know people ask me what i do all the time i just say make shit happen right you gotta make <laughs> things happen that's all so uh, i do a lot of uh, touring i do a lot of radio i do a lot of blogging social media streaming a little bit of everything so i just want to put my artists in the best place that they can win and develop a superstar formula that's what's up yeah. all right now and I, I i know we don't want to invest a bunch of time in this but i am kind of curious so if today you discover you've been in the game for a while yeah. if today you discover somebody and you're like that person's got it you know what i mean they got they, they're bringing it to the table we can make this person a star it, has that process changed a lot with the evolution of the internet and, and you know mix mixtapes you know what i mean maybe kind of fall into the sideline a little yeah. bit more i mean mixtapes is the new streaming platform sure uh you know building i mean it's the only thing that's really changed is the analytics so it, it's less of a, a jump out of the window risk and just more of, you know that's what it is before it was just like hey i'm you get it in your gut. You feel like you want to jump out here and sign some talent. So if I see some talent, I would, you know, I definitely like to. I build a, a story and a platform around it, and I take it to a major and make it happen. That's what's up. Sounds like you got a lot of success doing it too. <laughs> it's been good. The that's what's been up good to me. You know, as long as the bills are paid and the family is good, that's what, what makes it all work. It. Work. Yeah. All right. So you out here with the commission right now? Yep. Uh, tell us a little bit about what that. What you got going on with that? Uh, we're doing a three city tour, but this is like the probably the second or third time that we've, we've, we've partnered and did some stuff. Uh, every quarter I do a Streets Most Wanted tour, and um, at the end of the day, I like to, to take the best city, of the, uh, the best talent out of each city, and then I like to do an A&R showdown, so, and, you know, let those artists compete against each other and then take them to, you know, have a meeting with an A&R at a label. Nice, so that's a, that's a big opportunity. Yeah, definitely. It's Hell a great yeah. opportunity for especially a lot of new artists that a lot of people wouldn't get a chance to hear. So just from my personal uh my personal insight, mm -hmm. um so what are you are you are you feeling the hip hop's had a lot of ups and downs and mm -hmm. changes over the couple of years. There was the, the mumble rap scene for a yeah. little while. It, you know, it was built on bars. And I, I feel like it's kinda of trending back to bars. Where yeah. where do you see hip hop moving right now? I definitely think there's a lot of different lanes, especially get, it, once you get a chance to travel across the country. So, you know, the West Coast has its vibe, down south has its vibe, Chicago has its drill music, there's even New York drill music now, you know, so, but I think the bars are definitely coming back, so it's, it's definitely a good refreshing to, to have people, there's so much going on in the world, people have a lot more to talk about. For sure. Yeah. Word. Alright, so what's what's next for Big Half? What's next? I got a book coming out. I got a STEM program that I'm working on right now, uh, developing more stuff for Capital Structure. I'll probably sign two to three more artists for 2020. Uh, I got a distribution thing through Rock Nation's Equity. I got a lot of partnerships. So, yeah, so I got a lot of partnerships that's going on. And, you know, we're just building, man. I, I just want to create a foundation. Remember, like, back in the days we had Lyricist Lounge? Oh, yeah. I wanted to create a boutique uh, label like Lyricist Lounge from back in the days. What that's what's up. Yeah. That's that's my passion right yeah. there. The bars, the metaphors, yeah. the yeah, you know. So, you know, like if I see like some of the artists from back then, now, I just, we just have real good conversations about you know just providing a platform for a lot of the new up and coming rappers. Like I'm real big into the next wave, and you know, I feel like it's only right. That's what's up. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of spitters out here that need an avenue, and if you had a spot to channel that, yeah. That's a that's a win win. Yeah, we're gonna create a, we're gonna create something. I got a docu series called a platform as well on YouTube that is just talking about the trials and tribulations of artists and how they win or why they win and why they don't. Okay. So it's a lot of stuff, man. I'm all I mean, my life is a little bit hectic, but I, I'm putting it together in different projects. All right, you got a lot of irons in the fire. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, so if people want to know more about you, where can they find you? Uh, you can check out my book, Making It in the Midwest. That's everywhere on the, uh, iBooks, Amazon, Kindle. Uh, if you want, find me on social media. On Twitter is B-I-G-H-E-F-F. -F. On Instagram is Big Half Midwest Fresh. And I'm all over the Midwest, man. All right, look out. Big Half in a city near you coming soon. Yes, sir. Word. All right, man. Well, we appreciate you sitting down with MCTV. 
And uh, we're going to be looking for you. Catch up with you soon, bro. What up, man? It's your boy, Big Heffy. Watch it, MCTV. Yeah. Yeah. I make a mountain out of molehill and kill the rodent. I wrote these bars by accident and still they quote it. The seagull open up faces like we watching carbs. Unassuming shooters swam me in the case with rocket tops.